This video covers the different expressions of time and space that Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive course covers in sections 52 to 56. That's on pages 147 to 149. First, let's think about the non-nominative cases and some of the conceptions inherent in them. The genitive is used for words that are encompassing a whole when you're talking about something smaller than that whole. The dative points to a specific spot in time or space. And the accusative is often associated with forward movement. And I'll explain when we get to the accusative uses how that works with time and space. But let's go to genitive of time within which. So in Greek, when you want to talk about something that happens within a particular time, you give a time word in the genitive, day or night or hour or any other word that encompasses a period of time. You don't use a preposition. And the default translation will be during the time. You can also say within the time. So in teis men nuktos eluthemen, during the night we were freed. Tes nuktos is in the genitive. It's a time word without a preposition, and it expresses the period of time within which we were freed. Tes de hemeras tu stratiotas ethapsamen. During the day, we buried the soldiers. Sometime within that larger period of time, that whole, tes hemeras, during the day, we buried the soldiers. So that's what genitive can do. And you have to think about how English expresses whatever the period of time is and its idioms when you translate this into English. With the dative, we're pointing to a specific spot. So again, you'll get a time word in the dative and no preposition. And depending on the English time word, you will translate at the time or on the time, we can say um, at, uh, at 12 o'clock or um, on the first day. So your translation in English will depend on our idioms for the different aspects of time. In Greek, we're simply going to have it in the dative. Te prote hemera, hoplitas parate thalate doxo. On the first day, I will station the hoplites by the sea. It's pointing to that particular time, to a specific spot in time. And so all you need is a time word in the dative. Of course, it can be modified as it is here with first. Accusative tells us something about forward movement. So with time, what we're thinking about is a beginning time and an end time, here represented by these two lines. And what accusative does is talk about getting from the beginning to the end, all the way from the first line to the second line. In Greek, again, we're going to take a time word, this time in the accusative, with no preposition. And the English will depend on the time word and how we express that in English. So we might say for accusative extent of time, for the time, or simply the time, or sometimes all the time, all day, would be one way of expressing accusative extent of time if, we have, if we're talking about a day because it talks about going for the whole extent of the day. So here's an example in Greek. Pentehemeras tusneanias didaxomen. We taught the young boys for five days. That's the extent of the time that we taught them. From the beginning of the five days to the end of the five days, we taught the young men for five days. You can do the same thing with space and the accusative. So again we have this idea of forward movement but this time the two lines represent the beginning of a space or a distance and the end of the space or a distance and the accusative extent of space represents going from the beginning of that to the end of that from one point to the other the whole way. In Greek, we'll get a distance word in the accusative, and we won't have a preposition. 
and it will mean in English for the distance or sometimes simply will say the distance. It depends on how English expresses that extent of space. So in the example ton angelon pente stadius pemsete, it means y'all will send the messenger five stads. As you can see there, our idiom in English with distance doesn't even have a preposition when we're talking about distance sometimes. So we could say y'all will send the messenger four or five stads and we would mean that whole distance. But English is more likely simply to say five stads. Um, I went five miles to get to the store. I had to go that far, that extent of space, and there's no preposition in English. So think about how English expresses the same concept and you'll find the right translation. And those are the expressions of time and space that Hanson and Quinn wants you to learn in sections 52 to 56.